right then, welcome back to the channel. A little bit of an international break this weekend, so lack of United to be able to look at and analyse, but there's still no reason that we can't do a five things. So we're doing a five things, and we're going to look at five things that we've learned about Ralph Ragnick in his first 10 games. In at number one then, 60% win rate. Okay, it's not groundbreaking. It's not terrible. It's not bad either, if we look at it in the grand scheme of things. It's not bad. Since Ralph took over, he's managed a total of 10 games, eight of them coming in the Premier League, um, one in the FA Cup and one in the Champions League. In those 10 games, six wins, three draws and, and one loss. United have also scored 1.4 goals per match and only conceded 0.7 goals per match under his management. Comparing Ralph's first 10 to Ollie's last 10, we can actually see improvement. United are averaging an extra point per game, which is massive. Uh, and we're also seeing our win rate doubled, uh, which again is hugely impressive. And it's obvious that Rangnick has certainly tightened up at the back. We've seen concede 15 goals fewer than we did in Solskjaer's last 10 games, which is a, a phenomenal amount of goals. One similarity between the end of Solskjaer's tenure and the start of Rangnick's tenure, though, is that United's goals per game average with 14 goals scored in Ralph's first 10 and also in Ollie's last 10. So the one thing that we can really see tightened up that defense number two he's actually willing to change his formation he came out and he was like bosh have a bit of four triple two everybody um and that was the first well in five of his first six matches that's what we saw it wasn't working didn't seem like it was suiting the players and he persisted with it to the point where he had the evidence to say okay we need to fix this up during United's loss to Wolves, we saw him switch to a back three in the second half. Uh, in the FA Cup third round win over Aston Villa, he switched it to a 4-3-3. Uh, and we saw the team start to control uh, the majority of the game. And that's a word that we've seen Ralph use a hell of a lot, that control word. Now, Matic has started in the deeper midfield slot. We've also seen Bruno Fernandes and Fred operating just a little bit further forward as a pair of Julian eights. And it looks to me like the success that he's stumbled upon with the 4-3-3, and he's also sort of uh, talked about it in press conferences as well, I think the 4-3-3 is the formation that he's going to stick with, at least for this upcoming block of games. And he says, to me, it's important that we always win the next game that we play. It's also a question of formation. What's the best possible position for the players? We have now decided to play 4-3-3, like we did against Aston Villa, with one holding, six, and two eights, three offensive players. But we also have some competition on those positions. We have a big squad, maybe a little too big of a squad. Which leads us into point number three. Uh, still no Donny. Uh, after Solskjaer's sacking, Donny van der Beek would have been hoping for a fresh start, new manager, and get me in that team. And it's not been the case. Donny's yet to start a Premier League game this season. He's only recorded 380 minutes across all competitions, and he started one game under, under Ralph, which was against Young Boys. Van der Beek came on as a substitute in the 1-0 win over Aston Villa in the FA Cup, and then he praised the control, uh, or Ragnick at least praised the control that Van der Beek brought to United at the closing stage of that fixture. I, and I'm sure many of you, was like, right, there you go, Donny's going to be in the next one, isn't he? No. Um... <laughs> He came out and he said, look, from that very moment, we changed the diamond in the last 20 minutes when Donny came on, we controlled the game and we had um, our counter-attacking situations. That suggested Donny van der Beek could be starting in the next game. But then he was on the bench again against Villa in the league. Uh, and he was also an unused substitute against Brentford and West Ham. At the time of recording, he could be on his way out on loan to Crystal Palace before the window closes. Um I'm not sure how likely this is going to be. It's reported that Ralph kind of wants him to stick around at the club for the second half of the season. If other players are going, that could like reshuffle the pack and maybe he'll get his opportunity. Otherwise, I have no idea when Donny van der Beek is going to play for Manchester United. Number four, he don't like Luke Shaw. <laughs> After a ter terrific end to the season, I, I thought it was a, a good six-month period that Luke Shaw had. He's really fallen out of favour and is now seemingly not able to get in front of Alex Tellers to a starting place under Ragnick. During an interview in 2020, Ragnick actually stated that he didn't think Luke Shaw was good enough to play for United. And he said United could do with getting a left back. I know they have Luke Shaw, but not sure he's the sort of level you need for a club like Manchester United. Now, I thought that was a, an interesting thing to come out and say, not manager of Manchester United, to, to pull out a player like that. Typically, when you see interviews from, from anybody like this, certainly it's a club they're not involved with, the answers are extremely vanilla. And the answers are always kind of really generic. He's working hard. He's doing well. I, I like him. Joe. No one ever digs anyone out like that. So for him to come out and dig him out was, was really interesting. Now, I thought he'd be given a big opportunity and maybe even 
given more of an opportunity. So Ralph could kind of prove that I didn't have this prejudice against you. I just, you know, I'll give you a fresh start. And I'm actually not sure that's been the case because as soon as he came in, he was like, anyway, fucking take a seat, number 23. Tell us, let's go, son. Um, and he seems to have stuck with that. And it looks like a long way back from Luke Shaw right now. Uh, obviously, he's got a ham hamstring injury that he needs to recover from. But once he's fit, there is a zero guarantee that he goes straight back into the team. Number five, he's rewarding the youngsters. And this is the big, the biggest thing that I've found um, that I like, I think, about Ralph Rednick is that he, Luke Shaw aside, seemingly come with no misconceptions about what needs doing and who he wants to play and all the rest of that sort of stuff. He seems to have steamed right in there and gone, right, show me what you got. And he's given out debuts. Zidane Iqbal's got a debut. Charlie Savage has got a debut. Anthony Alanga has found himself back-to-back -back first team starts. Uh, and that's the most notable one. The amount of playing time Alanga has got is sensational. And it comes on the back of, who's that kid? He looked really good in training today. And he's impressed. And he started the last three league games for United um, and been rewarded after he popped up with a brilliant goal against Brentford. I would argue and go even a bit further than that, and I know this is 0 0.5, but let's call it 0 0.5, 0 0.5. He's made Ronaldo droppable. This manager that's never managed at a big club has come in and he's sat Cristiano Ronaldo down and he's taken him off and he's had arguments with him, clearly, in full view of everyone, and he's rode with the petulance of Ronaldo. Now, it might blow up in his face by the end of the season, or he might actually be able to harness him and get the best out of him. That remains to be seen. But it looks like he's not afraid to drop him. You know, taking him off to 71 minutes against Brentford, Ronaldo clearly wasn't happy with that decision. Um, it looks like he is there to only do one thing, and that is whatever the best is for the team in any given moment. Talking about what he said to Ronaldo, he said, you know, I told him, we were 2-0 up, we will have to learn lessons from Villa Park after today. After that game, I was angry with myself and not changing to about five. Today was exactly the same situation. 2-0, 15 left. And I didn't want to make the same mistake again. Take a seat. Shut your mouth. Ballsy call. Ultimately, it paid off. Um, I would say not bad is where it is. I'm a, I think it's a little bit giddy to be talking about this is the guy that's definitely got to take us. I say, open mind, man. I would like United to be working on listening to presentations, listening to the ideas of the other managers, listening to the ideas of Ralph as well about who he thinks might fit the profile of this team. Look, if he comes and recommends himself come the end of the season, if he's done a, a decent enough job, took us further than we expect in the Champions League, secured us a top four finish, maybe even a trip to Wembley to go and look at the FA Cup, whether we bring it home with us or not, you might say from where he joined to where he finished, do you know what? Let's see what he can do with a bit more time and a little bit more of his own people around him because I know he struggled to bring in the people he really wanted. We've hired one coach and a psychologist. You know, you've lost Carrick, you've lost McKenna. You've lost a lot of people in there. So let's see what he can do. Let's see what he's all about. No, nope, have to make any snap decisions that we can't change our minds on just yet. He's doing all right in pretty rough circumstances. Let's hope he can get it right and we can have a good end to this season. But I would say, at the moment, I call it like his win rate. Six out of ten and a couple of draws. Not bad. Let me know in the comments, do you agree? Do you disagree? But before you go, i got the next place that you're going. Uh, Stratford Paddock FC, we have a documentary which sort of details the behind the scenes of running and building the football club that we are making. Latest episode dropped today. Link is in the description. I'll also stick it in the comments. Go and watch it and see if you can see how much work we are putting in behind the scenes. And also let us know, are we going to win the league? Because I fucking hope we do. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.